It all started one day, back in June, when I was uh, browsing the internet. I ended up on Alibaba.com, and there I stumbled across some incredible deals. So this day is a real special day. About three months ago, I got the good idea to order a mini excavator from China. And uh, finally, today it will arrive. Really looking forward to see what's in the box. If it's a mini excavator or the real deal. And I don't really know what I need a mini excavator for, but... Uh... The prices just didn't seem real. For a little less than uh, $2,000, you could buy a mini excavator directly from China. <laughs> I thought, this, this right here is insanely cheap. The quality must be terrible. So a few seconds later, I had already sent out quite a lot of uh, price requests to different suppliers. None of the offers I got back were anywhere near the advertised uh, $2,000 price. But still, they were only a fraction of what a similar Japanese-made machine cost there in Norway. So I made myself a little list of uh, my requirements. The machine had to weigh 1.2 tons, adjustable tracks, a cab, a thumb claw, a swing boom, pilot controls, expandable blade, hydraulic quick coupler, and most importantly, a Kubota diesel engine. Not one of the single cylinder gasoline engines that most uh, Chinese mini excavators come with. I also wanted a bunch of different attachments. Different digging buckets, grading buckets, pallet forks, an auger, a grapple, and so on. And after a while, I got a reply from my friend, Michael. He works at a Chinese manufacturer called Jinning Volt Machinery Technology Company Limited, located in the northeast of China. In short, Volt from China. So there it is. <laughs> Not the biggest machine, but I guess that's what I order. A rake. It was really exciting to see what was inside the box. To make things a bit more interesting, I had done almost zero research beforehand. I just ordered the machine and tried to forget about it for months. After a couple of weeks though, I had to tell my significant other. This one would be handy. I told her not to worry about the potholes in the driveway anymore, because uh, I was expecting something in the mail. Just a excavator from the other side of the world. She was of course really impressed. Spare parts. I must say, I was pleasantly surprised by the equipment that came with the machine. It actually seemed pretty solid. I hope my machine can actually lift this, the forks. It's kind of locked in here, so starting the machine and lifting the, the boom and then get it out. The only problem is that the, the door is on the other side. And the box itself was uh, surprisingly sturdy too. It was really stubborn. This is stuck. So let's see if I can fit in here. I'm actually not sure. Is this a good sign for tools? So this is a VTW from Volt. And as you see, I order it with a Kubota engine. So I hope it's a Kubota. And it's made in June 2025. So let's see if I can get in there. Yeah, 
I can. <laughs> this is nice. So it should be oil in it, but I really don't want to start it without checking. So let's see what is inside here. Yeah. So it's a Kubota D722 EF18. It actually looks real good in here. And the Kubota fits real well in here also, so that's a good thing. This engine is a compact 0.7 liter, liquid cool, 3 cylinder diesel. It produces 10.2 kilowatts or about uh, 13 horsepower. And it's known for being exceptionally fuel efficient and high quality. There is the oil checker. It actually comes with a grease uh, gun and also some uh, wrenches. Hmm, quite a lot of them. And some pliers. Fittings for the uh, hydraulics. But let's see. And the instructions is also in English. That's a good thing. Oil level gouge, number 14. So I found it. It was right behind the diesel filter and everything was good to go. So let's see if there is some power. And then I guess it's just for me to... Uh, the fan. <laughs> the machine had been started for about uh, three months, but it fired right up. Sort of. I have never operated an excavator before, not a mini excavator either. But right from the start, I felt like a pro. So these are the extensions for the dorsal blade. This is a one meter. Okay. So as you see, there is a cylinder here so that I can tilt the bucket. And I'm digging on the side or want to make a trench or something. The machine was almost completely out of diesel, so... So I was looking all over the place to find where to to fill up the, uh, the diesel. It was not under here, but it was under here. And then... So this is a so-called uh, colored diesel here in Norway. It's a bit cheaper, but it's not allowed to use it on the public road. It's just allowed to use on uh, tractors and excavators and so on. And they add color so that uh, if you use this, ah, oh, fuck, it's full. So I have already got this uh, gravel delivered, and uh, the first project I'm going to do is to repair all the holes in the in the road here. There is a lot of them. The first bucket I wanted to test was the 1 meter bucket. And with the hydraulic quick coupler, it was super easy to just uh, hook it up.
So I was waiting for this, but uh, now it, uh, it stopped. And as you see from the time reader, I have fooled around for about uh, seven hours. So I got a little surprise. The last time I filled it up, I was only able to fill around five liters before it spilled over. After I filled up the tank, I couldn't see anything on the fuel gauge. I thought maybe it was some air in the system or yeah, something like that. So that means that uh, the machine can run for about seven hours with only five liters. And now I have filled it up with around 15 liters. I guess the machine will run about 20 hours with only one uh, fuel tank. That's insanely good. Another nice feature is that uh, when the fuel is out, the machine stops uh, automatically. And uh, you can see this little red thing that starts uh, lighting up. So let me introduce you to this video sponsor, Reolink. So they have been real kind and sending me a lot of cameras so that I can upgrade the camera system here at the workshop and also at my cabin. So having a hobby like this also means that uh, you need to have a lot of tools. At least that is what I'm telling myself because uh, after buying a lot of tools for many years, this uh, workspace or workshop is uh, getting quite uh, valuable. And until now, the only security in this workshop has been uh, this guy and uh, this shitty camera. Hold safe. Not a great name. I bought it for about uh, five years ago. I think it was working for about, yeah, maybe one week, two weeks. And about the same time, I bought another camera from this brand, Reolink. I installed it at my cabin and it has worked without any problems every day for all these years. And this was also the reason why I chose a camera from Reolink when I needed a camera in the garage for, for U1. So this is a Reolink Duo 3V and it's the power over Ethernet uh, version. So as I said, this is the power over Ethernet version. That means that I don't need a separate power supply. I can power the camera through the Ethernet cable. For running the power and the network through the same cable, you will need to have a switch like this. This is a TP-Link power over Ethernet switch. And if you don't have that, you can also use a power over Ethernet adapter. Not the best idea. And then it's just to scan the QR code behind the camera. So now we can easily toggle between all the cameras, both at the cabin and also at home. So this is uh, inside Johan's uh, garage. And here is outside the cabin and inside the garage. Perfect. Easy install. So a big thanks to Reolink for sponsoring this video and now back to it.